is news courtesy of Hypebeast, and it refers to Anti-Social Social Club. I bet you haven't heard about that name in a while, right? ASSC, Anti-Social Social Club, the brand set up by Neek Lurk, an OG from Nike Talk forums. That's the only way that I've known of him, to be honest, because I used to be on Nike Talk back in the day too. I predominantly spent my time on Crooked Tongues forum. That's where I kind of predominantly spent my time. And then I transferred over to fuk.co.uk. And then I went over to Fifth Dimension forum for a bit, but then there's some cunts over there. So I didn't stay there for that too long. And then what else I did? That was it, right? Sidewalk forum for a bit, slap for a bit. But the main sort of like sneaker streetwear forum that everyone kind of started from or has reference of is Nike Talk. And this guy on there called Neek Lurk um, ended up, you know, getting into cards and being some seen person in LA or Las Vegas, wherever he lives. And then out of nowhere, he started up this amazing brand called Antisocial Social Club. It had a really cool moment um, in terms of, you know, the actual name of the brand was just, you know, at the time it just hit and people kind of resonated with it. The the font, the way it waves, the, that font on the hoodie, that font on the flannel, that font on the t-shirt. It was just pure money. That was basically his, you know, his Supreme Box logo, his Bape head, um, his Nike swoosh and it absolutely sold you know he sold a hand over fist but for whatever reason the back end of the company just never really caught up with the front end so when it came to fulfilling orders when it came to shipping orders when it came to customer service they were just all over the place and unfortunately i think for anti-social social club and nick lurk i think this also coincided with streetwear kind of going mainstream you know how now you you know how now everybody's a sneakerhead right um everybody's a reseller or everybody knows what a yeezy is there was a time when this was still kind of somewhat um i won't say subversive but it was a kind of an underground culture it was you know it was it was for a niche audience and i think unfortunately because this brand happened to catch the zeitgeist um, I think it was also the time everyone was wearing. I forgot what that camp, there was a dad hat also that came out around that time that everyone was wearing that had some sort of words on it. There was a time when everything had words, right? And it kind of had, it was like an inflection point between anti-social club becoming the big thing and also the mainstream public gravitating to it and also realizing, oh, there's all these cool clothes, all these cool ladies, all these cool sneakers over there, let's go over there. And they just couldn't meet demand. And by the time it kind of got really big they just couldn't catch up to it and then by that time their reputation was damaged because the main thing that mainstream customers come in with is expectations from shopping from amazon and you know other high street retailers where they just they want this stuff and they buy it so when they come to this underground culture this niche culture where it's kind of um cool to not ship stuff on time it's kind of cool to not answer questions it's kind of cool to be rude to your customers there was a real big disconnect there and i think ever since then it's kind of suffered in terms of public perception but for whatever reason as a brand its value is still maintained which is probably the reason why a brand like marquee has decided to buy it which is flipping crazy because you haven't really heard of anti-social social club being spoken about um in the culture that much apart from when the, the drops happen and people see that it hasn't really progressed that much in terms of a brand in terms of its visual representations in terms of its product offerings it's still the same old stuff if anything the look books look better but in terms of what they offer in terms of products it's still kind of a bit lame but for whatever reason marquee brands doesn't think so this is as following anti-social social club as SC has been acquired by Marquee Brands, the parent company of Ben Sherman, Martha Stewart's namesake brand, and various other lifestyle labels. As reported by Business of Fashion, the acquisition was confirmed early this morning for an undisclosed sum. So we're talking millions. Speaking to BOF, Marquee Brands Chief Executive Neil Fist said, Our plan is to let ASSC be ASSC with no intent to change the brand DNA values or culture. Eh, lie. Whenever you hear that, that's basically, we're going to give you time, maybe a year, maybe two years to do what you do. If we don't see the bottom line improving, we're going to bring our people in to completely dilute it and ruin it. It happens every single time. This never works from startups to fashion brands, um, to tech companies, to service companies, it all happens. Whenever they get absorbed by a big company, they always say the same thing. We're going to bring them in house, give them access to all our resources, allow them to do what they do best because that's where they're here. And then as soon as it starts to affect their bottom line, boom, they get their own people. You know, you basically get pushed out or you be, you know, essentially if you start a company and you now turn into an employee, you're definitely not going to be comfortable with it because the whole reason why you started in the company is because you're an entrepreneur. So they put you in a position where you have no other option but to quit and then boom, it's over and it's done. 
done with it and you're going to start seeing anti-social social clubs sold on fucking um you know it's, it's in flipping tj maxx and stuff and whatever it may be do you know what i mean it continues um, it was founded in 2015 by Nick Lurk, found, uh, found fame among streetwear community at a time when Supreme was in its element, sitting alongside the Ultra Boost hype, a love for anything Kanye West, Tasha and Drake's hotline bling. Despite its appeal, bolstered logo, Ace uh, fell short when it came to delivering on his, collect on his collections, literally unheard of delivery tactics or a lack thereof meant that those who bought uh, um, uh, Antisol Social Club had to wait months to get their order at a time owing over 1,000 people their merchandise. But again, how I just want to know how can a brand that clearly has a uh, complicated relationship with their customers and clearly has a very inconsistent way of fulfilling orders how can they still remain valuable enough for a brand to acquire them i guess the reason why it would be is because of their customers right it's not because of the brand it's because of who they have in terms of customers so if you're marquee you want to start appealing to a younger audience or you want to start appealing to an audience that has more disposable or income that they're willing to yeah they have disposable income that they're willing to spend on stuff so you want to increase that you want more and you're going to hope in a weird way because sales people and brand people are strange they they think somehow that they can get the anti-social club customer to come into marquee and then start buying their other brands that exist under their umbrella it doesn't really make any sense but i guess that's part of the a law that they're trying to um that's part of the dream that they have right in terms of buying or acquiring anti-social club because on paper it doesn't make any sense on paper it's like this company was probably going to fizzle out and die eventually or maybe not i don't know how much he spends in making the stuff and how much he makes or whatever it may be according to the website i just checked it earlier everything is sold out so business is booming over there everything is sold out on the website of antisocialclub.com so maybe it's still going well but um yeah i just wonder how they're able to keep they're, they're able to hold their value considering that clearly public perception has shifted um clearly maybe the business isn't where it should be but i guess if you're a big multi-brand conglomerate like marquee you probably got the people in place who can definitely crack the whip and get that brand into shape very very sharpish it's probably not that hard to do um i can definitely imagine it but yeah big up nick he's probably cashed out in a big way will he be turning up to marquee brands offices and working out of there will he end up just abandoning it and maybe spilling the beans in some rant soon probably who knows but regardless it's cool to see him get um a big check a big payday off the back of it and hopefully he can go on to do other cool things